Hello and welcome to my channel. Preptober is finally among us, the month dedicated to gearing up for our NaNoWriMo writing projects. And in today's Preptober vlog, I'm going to be rereading draft 2 of my current work in progress, Project Soulmates, in preparation to write draft 3 during NaNoWriMo. I hope you guys enjoy this first episode of my Preptober series. Okay, you guys, I am so excited to finally enter Project Soulmates after having left it aside for so, so long, but I've been missing the story. I'm so excited to come back to it. I have draft two printed out right here. I got it printed at Staples and I got it binded and everything. I am so excited to start reading this. Looking ahead to the next two months, it's like the two busiest months for writers, Preptober and NaNoWriMo. And I found this product that is a game changer right in time for the two busiest months and I want to share it with you guys because I know a lot of you would benefit from it as well and it is called Magic Mind. Magic Mind is a productivity shot and they were so kind enough to send me 15 bottles to try for myself and what I love about it is that the founder says that if athletes have Gatorade, creators now have Creatorade and I love that so much. Basically it's a productivity shot that gives you energy, helps you stay focused and relaxed. I think what's so great about this is that if you're the type of person who drinks caffeine to stay alert, especially during NaNoWriMo when you have to spend so much time writing, but you really don't like the side effects like the jitters that coffee gives you and how it sometimes heightens your anxiety or gives you an upset stomach. This is a great replacement for it because this keeps you alert and keeps you productive and focused. But if you're someone who does want to keep caffeine as part of your daily routine, then you can take this alongside your caffeine for an extra dose of productivity and energy and focus that coffee will not give you. And I think it's just so great how versatile this is. And speaking of versatility, I have been taking this for a few days because I didn't want to promote a product that I hadn't tried for myself to see if it works before recommending it to you guys. And I can tell you so far that it has worked so well. I take this and it literally gives me so much energy and keeps me focused. And I've been productive every single time I've used it. But the versatile thing about it is that you can make it in so many different ways. You can add it to your caffeine, you can add it in juice, you can take it as a shot. There's just so many different ways that you can make it, which I absolutely love. So I'm going to take one now because I'm gonna get into my rereading and I want to be productive and focused so now's a great time to take it and I'm so excited I actually love the taste of this so much oh I love the taste it's so strong oh my gosh it's so strong but I love it it tastes like tropical okay I love it. Wow. If you guys want to try this, now is like the perfect time with Preptober NaNoWriMo coming up. You can use my code V20 for 20% off your order and get your hands on this for yourself. Okay, I am officially ready to jump into this reread. You guys, I'm so excited to read this. Like, I missed this so much. Like, I just randomly opened a page and I'm like, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Let's get started. Also, I wanted to point out that I decided to print my draft with the alpha reader feedback that I got for this draft because I figured that for draft three, when I'm writing it, it'll be so much easier if I have her notes and the notes that I make during this reread all together in one spot, rather than having like the copy with her notes and then the copy with my notes and then having to like look at both at the same time. So I thought this would be the easiest thing for me. Plus it's nice because now I have like a little side area on my pages where I can highlight and then transfer the notes to like put the notes on the side, which is really convenient, so yeah. For this revision, I'm going to be using colored tabs, highlighters, and a pen, and I'm going to be using a color-coded revision system. So with the blue color, I'm going to highlight all of my world building slash world conflict elements and issues, because if you saw my alpha reader feedback video, you'll know that this is the biggest area I'm going to have to tackle within this draft. I'm going to be using the pink color to highlight any character arc elements so that when I'm crafting a better character arc for Anna for draft 3, I can easily find the parts in this draft where her character arc is highlighted. And I'm going to be using the orange color for subplot. Now you'll see later in this video that I also use green tabs throughout the story and those are for my minor subplot. Orange is for my major subplot. And then I'm going to be using the yellow color for all other edits line edits, and minor details.
So far, revising is going so well, and I'm loving this story. Like, I'm, I think it's because it's the start of the story, which I've worked on, like, the most, because the start is, like, super important. Um, so we'll see how my thoughts change throughout the book, but so far, I love it so much. And the good thing is that there are, so far, no big picture changes, except for the soulmate ceremony algorithm, which I knew would be a big change, because if you watch the video where I analyzed my alpha reader feedback, this was, like, one of the big major things that I need to tackle going into the next draft, just because it's, like, a world building element and so there are going to be lots of questions raised if all of the details aren't nailed so I knew that would be a big picture change and I'm glad to see that there aren't a lot of big picture changes so far because when I was revising draft one I really wanted to tackle all of the big structural changes plot changes things like that so that this draft could be like line editing and stuff which is why I'm doing line edits and so I'm hoping that there won't be a lot to change there, there definitely will be some other changes but I'm hoping there won't be a lot so that this can be a really polished draft so that I can give it to beta readers for the next draft. or afternoon rather. Um, I had a lot of work to do this morning, but it is 2.30 and I can now dedicate the rest of the day to the reread, which I'm super, super excited about. I got to page 63 last night and I forgot how long it takes to reread a draft. Like in my head before I start, like I'm like, oh, this will take like a day, it's fine. And I forget how long rereads take. Like they take a while for me at least. I guess it's because I'm like taking notes and stuff. And then I also forget it's like an actual book and I never finish a book in a day. So why would I expect to finish mine in a day? Even though, mind you, I don't think my book is the actual length of a published work that's for my genre and age range, making a refreshed outline, I have to find out what the ideal word count is for a novel in my genre for my age group. So why a romance? Because I know if you're planning to be traditionally published, which is what I'm hoping to get into when I'm done Project Soulmates, even though I don't know yet what I'm gonna do traditional self-publishing, but I'm thinking it's traditional publishing. And I know that the publishing industry have specific requirements for word count length, I think, like a, a range. So I'm gonna have to do research on that because say for for example, um, my draft is too short. It's at 58,000. I don't know what the range is supposed to be, but I think it's supposed to be somewhere around there. And if it's too short, then it's better that I know before I make a refreshed outline because then I can take that into account when I'm making a new outline because I could add chapters, I could add filler in here and there. But I'm pretty sure romance for YA is around 50 to 70,000. I'm not too sure. I think that's what I saw the last time I checked, but definitely have to look into that later on. But yeah, I'm 60 pages in and I'm pretty sure I have like 250 printed pages so we have a lot to do and so I'm just gonna get right into reading it. I'm discovering just how right my alpha reader was because as I went through in my alpha reader feedback video She was able to pick up on the fact that this story is an enemies to lovers But one of her like notes for me was that it feels more like boy pulling crushes braid feel to quote her words Rather than like true enemies to lovers and that was something to consider like whether or not that's the vibe I wanted it to give and I don't want that I want it to have more animosity at the beginning I want it to be more of a slow burn and as I'm reading this 
this, I'm starting to realize she's right. Like, like I have to, had to cut out so many like smiles and laughs and stuff in each other's presence for like the main characters that are happening too early on. Like, I think when I was writing this, I thought everything was happening a lot slower, but as I'm reading it, I'm noticing that their romantic progression is happening too quickly. And if I want a slow burn, I have to draw out the animosity for longer, if that makes sense. So really glad that the Alfreda pointed that out and that I'm noticing it while I'm reading it. And it's interesting how a reread can change your perspective on your novel because when you're writing it, it takes you so much longer that sometimes you can think things are happening way slower than they actually are because when you read it, chances are you're reading it a lot quicker. So everything is happening at a faster pace. And so definitely for the next draft, I have to focus on drawing out the progression of their like romantic feelings towards each other. So that's another big change that is going to be made for the next draft update this is how far i am into the live stream with abby i paused it so that i could say something which is that i am so happy because i stumbled across a part where i was like ugh, like this specific thing needs to be changed in this scene and it's bothering me so much because i don't know how to change it but i know it needs to go but it needs to be changed in a way where it doesn't alter what the rest of the things that happen in the scene because those i want to keep i know i'm being so vague and so it's probably confusing but i was like oh my god what do i do and then i thought of the solution and it's so simple and it's just gonna change everything for the better and i'm so happy like that's just so exciting because a lot of the things i'm like okay that's a future me problem like i'll figure that out later and i was like i'm increasing the list of things i have to figure out later but this i solved now so i'm very very happy about that I quickly wanted to point out that while I stay home, my lovely twin sister Serena goes away for university and she says that if I ever need a change of scenery, I'm free to use her desk in her room. So I'm currently in her room right now at her desk in case any of you are confused. But yes, shout out to Serena for letting me use her desk. So I forgot to plug in my microphone when I was filming these clips and the audio is very bad so I decided to do a quick voiceover summary of what I'm saying. Basically, as you know, I printed out this draft with my alpha readers reactions and comments in the documents and while I loved reading through with her to see her reactions alongside mine, it got really bad when I went got to the cringy scenes, either cringy because they were badly written or super cheesy and it just made it that much cringier because I knew that she read those scenes and basically I'm just freaking out about it. Cool. Okay, bye. <laughs> Hey guys, it is a lot later. It is Friday, October 7th, and I just had a crazy busy week. And on top of that, I had a cold, a really bad cold. So that is why it's a few days later, but I have finally finished the reread of draft two of Project Soulmates. As you can see here, I have done lots of tabbing, lots of edits, lots of notes. And you guys, at the beginning of this, I feel like the first few chapters were just so, so good that I was like, oh, there's not a lot of changes to be made. I was very humbled. <laughs> by the end of the book. There are a lot of things that still need to be changed, even though they're not huge things. There's still so many ways I can ameliorate this draft, which makes me excited because we have a lot of work to do for Preptober. But again, it's so exciting to take something that you have that's good and make it even better and make it even better each time around. Like progress is progress and I'm really, really excited. But I think my biggest change for this draft is within the algorithm, fixing like the world conflict issues basically. And then also the progression of Ian and Anna's relationship like I mentioned earlier I just don't want it to progress too quickly and then also the fallout of the book I felt was too short so like that moment in the novel where like everything's gray everything goes wrong um I think that part I could extend flesh out because it, it seemed a little quick to me and it didn't seem as bad as it could be so those are like big big things and then other things were my like I just needed to find filler words for stuff like I use my heart for descriptions so much in this like my heart sinks my heart melts my heart like like things like that like it's just too much of that and then winking something 
things are things that my alpha reader already pointed out, but as I was reading, I realized I'm gonna need to find different filler words for other things. Also, I wanna be able to take part of the month of Preptober, like take some time in Preptober to learn how to craft deeper POVs because I think my character Anna's really, really voicey, but I wanna pull the reader even more into her head and I think I can go even deeper than it already is, though I do think it's fine as it is. I think we can go deeper and so why not do that, you know? And yeah, that was pretty much it. The rest were like minor edits, but we have a lot to do for draft three and I'm super excited to have a foundation of notes that I can use as a guide for amelioration for this draft in time for NaNoWriMo. So I'm very, very happy about that. And with all of that being said, that is the end of episode one of my Preptober series. If you're participating alongside me and other writers in Preptober NaNoWriMo, I would absolutely love to know what you're working on. So let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, if you guys want to try Magic Mind for yourself, you can use the link in my description below. Highly recommend it. And you can also use my code V20 for 20% off your order. That being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, it means so much to me if you could give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to turn on the post notification bell so you're notified when I upload episode two of this Preptober series. Best of luck on your writing projects and I will see you in my next video. Bye!